I want to discuss another model of capital structure that is Miller's theory. So some of you may be familiar with the Modigliani-Miller theorems of capital structure and I've done several videos on those and I'll provide the links below. But just as a recap, um, they look at capital structure under different conditions. So capital structure being the using debt and equity to finance the firm. So if there are no taxes, then the value of the leveraged firm and the value of the unleveraged firm are going to be equal. In the case where there are corporate taxes, the value of the leveraged firm equals the value of the unleveraged firm plus T times D, where T is the tax rate and D is the amount of debt that's used. So Miller proposed an alternative approach that includes corporate and personal taxes. In the previous uh, Modigliani-Miller theorems, they only looked at corporate taxes. Now, personal taxes lessen the advantage of corporate debt. Corporate, uh, corporate taxes favor debt financing since corporations can deduct interest payments. Personal taxes favor equity financing since no gain is reported until the stock is sold. And long-term gains are usually taxed at a lower rate, okay, the capital gains rate. So Miller derived this formula here. So the value of the leveraged firm equals the value of the unleveraged firm, but instead of it being T times D, where T is the corporate tax rate, he has this um, formulation, one minus, and up here, one minus the corporate tax rate times one minus the tax on stock income divided by one minus the tax, the personal tax rate on debt times the rate on debt. So let's take a look at an example here. Suppose the corporate rate is 20%. The um, rate on debt for a person is 25% and the rate on income for stock is 15%. Well, if we work this out, we get that this factor here, instead of it being T times D, which would have been 20% times D, it's 0.0933 times D, so about 9.33%. So every dollar uh, increase in debt raises the leveraged firm's value by 9.33 cents. So use of debt financing still remains advantageous, uh, but the benefits are less than under only corporate taxes. In this case, firms should still use 100% debt. So what I did here is I actually put this formula into an Excel spreadsheet, just so we can see what this looks like. So this is the case where there's no tax on debt for, for individuals, and there's no tax on stock income for individuals. So we can see this factor here, that's this in parentheses, is 20%. Let's go to the example we had before, where we had 25% here and 15% here, and we see that it's that 9.33%. What we can do is we can change some of these numbers and see how things impact this factor here, that is how much it increases the value of the leverage firm by using debt. So let's say instead of the uh, tax rate on stock being 15%, let's say it's 20%. Well, that causes this to increase. And that makes sense, right? Because a higher rate on stock income is going to encourage individuals perhaps to see uh, or to favor debt income. Let's go to the same rate here as 25%. So these are the same. It turns out that this factor is the same as is the case where um, there is no personal taxes. Let's see what happens if we <clears throat> go back to 15% here and let's lower the the tax rate on individuals for debt from 25 to 20%. And again, we can see that causes 
this factor here to go up. So this is actually kind of nice to see how these things change over time. If we increase the corporate tax rate to 25%, that of course increases this factor and makes debt more desirable. So it's a good way to sort of understand the fact that um, once you introduce personal income taxes into the Modigliani-Miller model, you get this model that Miller came up with and it changes things and it changes the impact of the use of debt, although debt still comes out to be desirable because there is still a tax shield here.